Massive tunnel bores, massive crop farms, and massive interconnected underground conveyor systems. How can I connect all of my farms to a single storage controller? Last episode, I made a crushing machine that generates and stores XP in giant copper tanks, but today's projects are so big, it's going to cost me almost all of my iron and every single piece of andesite I can get my hands on. Let's create. Outside of the video, I have made some modifications and enhancements to this room, as well as a bunch of other things. I've actually compressed the size of this down substantially so that we've got a little access door now to get in the back of here. I created this smelting machine, which is basically a fan blowing into lava, which allows me to put items in there, which then go into there once they're cooked using a filter. And I created a machine to make the precision mechanisms, which basically you just put a gold ingot on and it will just go round and round and round until it's turned into a precision mechanism just like that and i crafted up a whole bunch of these things as well as well as making some engineer's goggles which you can put on your head and when you're wearing the engineer's goggles it allows you to see a little bit more information about all of these things particularly this stressometer that i added to see how much remaining capacity was in the system in order to not totally stress it out and in order to help optimize that i've added a bunch of speed controllers so we've got a speed controller there which is managing the kelp farm and that's running very slowly We've got a speed controller here, which is going much faster, which is managing all of these things on here and those as well. And I even added one right down here at the bottom, which is managing our gantry shaft, which is running our kelp farm. Again, this is running pretty slowly because it doesn't need to go quickly, which means I've been able to remove a whole bunch of cogs and wheels and gearboxes and all that sort of stuff that I was using for speed before. And it means the entire thing is running a lot more efficiently. And I've got these lovely little doors to access all of these little areas so that I can get to things things when I need to, which is fantastic. And there's more, more things that I've done that I didn't bother to actually record. See, I've been fiddling with my lift. I've added a whole bunch of layers every 10 blocks down all the way to the bottom of the world. And if I click to go to the bottom and look, then you'll see I've added all of these little entrance ways as well as digging out a big area inside of each one on every single floor because we got some mining to do. But I'm not just going to be coming out here mining with my pickaxe. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to be building an incredible tunnel boring machine to do it for me. But before we get to that, there are distractions. We have a chap. We have Doyle. Hello, Doyle. What have you got? Trade offer. Rope. I don't need rope. Bombs? Doyle, what are you selling? And firework rockets. I don't need those either, Doyle, really. Oh, what are rope arrows? <gasps> What do rope arrows do, Doyle? I need to know. I need to find out. Stay there, Doyle. In fact, do you know what, Doyle? So that you don't get lost. You come in with me, sunshine. You come in here. That's it. I would like to borrow some rope. And I would like some rope arrows. Do you just get one for four emeralds, Doyle? I like a bomb. I don't know what you do with bombs, but I want one. Let's get a bomb. Thanks, Doyle. Okay, then. I have a bow. I have some rope arrows. What can I... Get off me table, Doyle. Get off. Wait. Shoo. Pest. I have a rope arrow and I have a bow. What can I do with it? Is this going to be some sort of... I bet I need a crossbow for this. It did nothing. Oh, no, it has. He's given me a rope ladder. What? That's crazy. So if I pick up that arrow now, is my rope ladder going to disappear? How do I get it back? Wow. Okay, so I can make easy ways up and down things using rope ladders. Fancy. But I don't need rope ladders at this moment in time, and I probably shouldn't be carrying around bombs with me. What I do need, though, is a bunch of wood. I'm nearly out of spruce. Again. So before we get carried away on big old mining machines, I need to make a reasonable sign wood machine. A wood machine? Yes, a machine that makes wood. And we do, it doesn't need to be massive, but it does probably need to be out of the way of things because it's going to grow big trees. Let's just clear a little bit of area out here. Let's tidy up this floor a little bit. Let's put our trusty backpacks down. Roll my bed out. Have a sleep. Dig a little bit of a hole. Pop in a mechanical bearing. Change that to only place when anchor destroyed. Craft up a bunch of mechanical saws. Some brass hands. A handful of deployers. And stick it all together. So I have four deployers on the back of this chassis. Four saws on the front of this chassis and a uh, couple of chests on top of this chassis now i need to tell each one of these to accept only spruce saplings not as easy as it seems one two three four put the rest of the spruce saplings in there glue the whole lot together there like that stick a vertical gearbox below it and a water wheel then all we got to do is pour some water in here and hope it's going to turn in the right direction We'll find out. No, it's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. It's emergency. There we go. 
Ow. Whoa. Ah. And now what it's going to do is plant a bunch of trees, ideally not stab me. And when they grow, it's going to chop them all down. Wonderful. And hopefully this will work. Now, I'm not sure that spruce trees will grow so close together. While we're waiting for the wood farm to do its thing, I'm going to create a little bit more brass because I need even more deployers. The next thing I'm going to need is a cart assembler. And that's nice and easy. And I'm going to need a mine cart as well. Well, it's been a day and a night and so far no spruce trees have grown yet. So I can only assume this isn't going to work with spruce. I do think that spruce is a little bit picky about what it can be next to in order to grow full size. So we might need to do this with oak saplings. But I'm not going to worry about that right now, because right now I need to build an incredible machine. Which means I actually need to go back that way and go and get my stuff so I can build it. So let's head down to the first floor of our mine, put down a piece of powered rail and then a deployer. And with just these few items in my inventory, I think I can create something incredible. So first we're going to pop a mine cart down there. Stick on some linear chassis like this. Build this around here like this. And then the same on this side. And a little bit down the back. Just like that. Now at the front of this thing, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, twenty mechanical drills. Better stick them all together before I forget. And then on the inside here, we're going to have some of these deployers. Now these need to be in a very specific place. In fact, I need to get rid of that there and rid of that there. We have a deployer there and a deployer there and then three across the bottom here. And I actually need two more. But before I get too far ahead of myself, I need to make some filters. And I've got some filters. And these filters are going to have cobblestone and cobbled deep slate inside. And then I need to put one on there. One on there. One on there. I'll have to get rid of that one so that I can put one on there. Put that back. So all five of these deployers are going to deploy either cobbled deep slate or cobblestone. There we go. I've got a couple more deployers now. These deployers are going to sit a little bit higher up. That one's going to go there. And that one's going to go there. And one of them is going to place redstone torches and the other one's going to place powered rail. Which reminds me, there's two things I completely forgot to build. I need a mechanical plow. In fact, I need two of them. Back to the workshop. Two mechanical plows, please. And I need a seat. And there we go. And it looks like this thing's still not doing anything at all. Oh, jeez. You got anything? Nothing in that chest. Oh, don't, don't stab me. What about that chest? No, nothing. Let's try oak instead. And off it goes again, doing its thing, now planting oak. We'll come back to that in a little bit and see if we've had any more luck. Right, anyway, shall we get back on track? So, we've got all of our deployers set up. We need a plow here and a plow there. And then we need a little seat there. We need to glue those three things together. And then we just need a whole bunch of storage. And there we go. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double chests with the storage. That's absolutely plenty. Let's get all of those things glued together. In fact, we need to glue absolutely everything together. Let's come right over here, glue all of that, and I still need to get these bottom three deployers as well. So let's get those done as well, like that. That should be everything glued, I think. Oh, are these deployers glued? I think they are, but just in case, stick a bit more on. You can never have enough glue. So now if I preload one of these chests with a little bit of cobble and some redstone torches and some power rails, in fact, I need one of those redstone torches and a couple of pieces of powered rail. And I need to put the floor back in down here and put a couple of bits of rail there like that. All I got to do, assuming as I've got everything right, is power that. And there we go. It's placed those two there. All of the deployers are down. So uh, let's just put a few blocks in its way to slow it down a bit, just so that I can see it. And let's uh, give it a push. A quick shove there. There we go. Oh, dear. Oh dear, I might not have glued on the mechanical drills, but otherwise it went perfectly. Let's try glue it on properly this time. That would be a good idea. Yeah, I don't think I glued any of this to the actual front of it. So let's just grab that glue there. Just drag it all the way to the back over here. Why not? That should get that top lot done. And the other ones are glued to it as well. But I'm going to stick even more on just in case. There we go. Lots of glue. Everything's glued. There's total glue. It's glue mayhem. There's no reason this thing won't all go together now. I believe everything's going to be fine. Let's do this. Go. 
There we go. And now it's drilling and it's going. Watch this incredible machine. So the reason I've got it putting cobblestone at either side and cobblestone in the floor as well is because, well, when I was doing this in my creative test world, I ran across a lava lake and the lava kept destroying the redstone torches and the rail. Now, this thing is designed to destroy the redstone torches and the rail in order to pick them up to put them back in the machine so it never runs out. But if lava gets in there, then it runs out and it just gets stuck. Oh dear, I'm taking damage. It appears we've gone through some silver fish. And now there's one in my seat. Hey, get out. Well, I guess my design isn't 100% flawless because we've run into water. I didn't check for water in my test world, but yeah, the water has completely destroyed the track that it was running on and stopped it from being able to go any further. But we have come an incredibly long way. We've gone from minus 810 to minus 1,300, so about 500 blocks. Now the challenge is, how do I get all of this home? See, we've got a bunch of stuff in there, we've got a bunch of stuff in there, we've got a bunch of stuff in there, and a bunch of stuff in there. But I can get it home quite easily, and I believe with all of the things in it, although I might be just about to lose everything that exists in here, because I believe if I just pick it up like that, it just goes into my inventory and I hope that it's going to keep all of those items with it. And if it doesn't, I'm going to cry when I get back. And back here, hopefully, if I place it back down on there, it should still have, yes, it has all of its stuff in it. This is incredible. So now all I need to do is empty it all out and then just take it down to the next floor. The tree has grown. This is good news. And it's now being sawed down. And while I was sitting there waiting for that little mining machine to mine, I came up with a good idea of how I can actually do all of this with spruce trees. But before we get carried away with spruce trees, let's get this thing actually emptied out now that I'm near the surface. Now this time I'm not going to go to the second floor. I'm going to go all the way down to the very bottom floor and run it down there and see if we can find ourselves any diamonds. Yeah. I thought that might happen. It stopped because it's gone into a big lava lake. And the problem is now it's going to be very difficult for me to get to it to actually pick it up. I don't think I can pick it up just from here. I think I actually have to pick it up from the minecart, which is right underneath. Can I unwaterlog these chests? That should be all I need to do. So let's pop it all up. And there we go. It is a contraption again. It's not happy about something, though. Perhaps this wasn't the best level to go mining on. Although, that said, there was a lot of diamonds. Maybe if I just fill the rest of this lava in and block off this water and then just hope that that patch of lava over there isn't going to cause as many problems as this one did. What's going to happen this time? Oh, no. Quick, pick it up. Right, yeah. No. Mm -mm. No. We're going to do a different floor. And now I'm dead again. Hooray! I don't know how either. I decided to do a little bit of editing while I was riding this contraption, and um, the next thing you know, I was no longer alive. And the contraption still may be going all on its own without me, unless it's found itself more lava again. And I've got no torches, I've got no armor, I've got no weapons, and I'm going into the deep, dark, black, horrible... Oh, jeez. What could go wrong? Two creepers and a spider. That's what could go wrong. Whoa. Dodged. Hmm. Now a skeleton and an ow and a zombie. Oh, good. Where's my grave? Oh, it has to. Oh, it's literally right there. Right, okay. And my stuff, please. They didn't give me my stuff. There we go. Now I got my stuff. Which means I can now take on you, smelly guys. Well, I have no idea how I died because I closed the game and opened it again, so I've got no chat. And my obituary doesn't seem to tell me either. So I can only assume it was probably silverfish again or something else attacking me. And the fact that I've got absolutely no torches and can't really see what's going on. Well, I'm not really surprised that I died. Oh, jeez. I've just thrown my pickaxe on the floor. I'm surrounded by skeletons and creepers. I can't believe I just did that. Press the wrong button. Quick, give me it back and run away. Oh, jeez. No, stop it. Leave me alone. I really should consider getting myself a little bit better equipped. Well, before we decide we're going to go back down and do any more mining, I've got a few things to do. So now that I've got absolutely tons of cobblestone, I'm going to put a whole inventory's worth of it through this grinding machine because what that's going to do is going to create gravel for us and gravel's going to be coming in very useful. Then I'm going to take another full inventory's worth of cobblestone and put it all inside this barrel, which will slowly spit it out across here. And hopefully, if I've done this right, that should just turn into stone. I just need to adjust this 
this filter. And if I put stone onto that filter there, that will only allow stone into there and not cobblestone. I'm also going to be running all of this stuff through the crusher as well to get the XP out of that. And of course, to break down these diamonds. And we got eight diamonds there as well. So I guess there's going to end up being quite a big queue at this thing. But that's fine. We'll just stick another chest on here and then we can shove all of that stuff in there as well. Lovely. While that's doing that, I'm going to take me mining machine back down pit and there's a ruddy creeper waiting for me at end it pit lane. Bye, heck. Clear off, ruddy creepers. Silverfish already. I literally just started it. Where do you come from? You're so annoying. Why are there so many of you? Get off me seat. Well, that's slightly concerning. I really hope that's not what we're heading towards in this direction, because that could be a problem. That's not a noise I'm used to. What's it breaking? More diamonds. Whoa, the minimap is just uncovered. What? There isn't just one ancient city. There's about 4,000. How are there so many? The question is, though, are we heading towards one? Uh, there, yes, there is one in that direction. There are 15 ancient city portals in this area of the world. 15! And 4 billion silverfish. And many diamonds. And creepers on my machine. Lots of creepers. Hey, guys. Oh, look. More ancient city stuff over there. What could go wrong? <gasps> I'm nearly dead. Oh, jeez. No, thank you. I am now inches away from mining into this ancient city, and I have to admit, I am a little bit concerned. I might have to hang back a little bit, but then I also need to be there in case it spawns a warden. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's getting into it. I can see Catalyst. It is setting off. It is setting off those things. This could be a problem. This could be a major problem. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I think we should um I think we should go guys. I'm gonna mark this the end of the line. And while I'm here, I might just grab a couple of these things. You need a hoe! No, I just need to spend a long time with the silk touch pickaxe. Nice, right. Run away! In terms of distance, this time I had to zoom out a long way to figure out how far we've gone. We've gone from minus 807 to minus 1581, which is about 700 blocks. So not bad. On my way back, I'm going to dig up as much of this stuff as I can with my Sickle Touch pickaxe, though, because this is going to be great for our XP machine. Back on the surface, I've managed to dig out a whole bunch of different raw ores, and I'm going to shove them all through this machine. And how much did we get from that last haul? Another 11 diamonds, a bunch more zinc and gold, and a bit of redstone. But otherwise, just mostly cobbled deep slate and tough. Which is fantastic, because that now means we have over two stacks of diamonds. Which is particularly important, because I have almost no clothes left. So I guess it's time to get suited up. And buy a few books. Stick at each one of these with each one of these. And then worry about mending and unbreaking later on, because now I am protected. Now, if I'd actually had enough emeralds to buy enough of the the right books, then I would have needed a lot more levels than I had to put them all on my clothes. And that brings me back to this. There's 2.76B in there. I have no idea how many levels that equates to, but let's just stand on here, get the rest of our levels out. Now there's 2.84B, and I'm just going to stand here and wind the handle and see how many levels I would actually get from all of that. 39! Not bad. We've managed to store up 39 levels in there altogether, which is pretty good, considering we're still crushing a bunch of stuff down and getting even more. So I'm going to stand back on here so I don't waste anymore. Let them all go in there, and then come and check on my wood farm and see how many woods it's got us. Look at all of that. That is tons of spruce. Well, that really didn't didn't take long at all. So emeralds then. Clearly at the moment the only way I'm getting any emeralds is by trading what little bit of food I've got. This person only takes carrots. Oh, you, you're ready. You're ready for more. I like it. Take my carrots. Which is proving to be a not particularly fruitful experience. Then we've got Mrs. Wheat and Potatoes, and then we've also got Mrs. Wheat and Potatoes. So, yeah, we really could do with something else to trade with these guys to give us a few more emeralds. And of course, we've got a bunch of librarians in here, which means we've got a potential for a bunch of paper trades. But I still haven't got any paper. That said, we know we can get paper from Treebark by using our chopping board, as we found out a couple of episodes ago. But that seems like pretty manual hard work, really, and, uh, well... 
I'm not the biggest fan of hard work. So I feel like a sugarcane farm should probably be on the card. So I'm going to go off, find ourselves some sugarcane, and then go and design a farm that works with Create. So I took stroll through woods to go back to the village. It will decide it woods, but then blasted villages and gotten out. So I went off along edge of water till I found just what I wanted. Cracking. Then I found a blooming dry seal, so I picked it up and put it back in water. Cracky, we're thankful. But then it got dark. Bye, yeah. I was suddenly surrounded by horrible things like trees and grass but then all my friends came out to see me and we played a game of stacking things on top of each other but heck it were a good game i got a bit turned around during fun and ended up lost out yonder so headed back and found a couple of grizzlies hiding into woods they didn't want to play stacking though that was sad suddenly i was back home with just a handful of stuff i went away for but it's not about the blooming destination by craggy it's about the blooming journey isn't it Speaking of journeys, it was time to make a create-worthy sugarcane farm that would also be home to my vegetables. I started by flattening a large area to the side of the storage building, replacing the rooted dirt, coarse dirt and other blocks with normal dirt, and then tackling the cliff behind to give myself as much space as possible. I then marked out three lanes that would be divided up by water and took to tilling the dirt into farmland. During this process, a zombie horde appeared inside my storage building while I was crafting up some items, so I tackled my way out of there and did a runner. Once they were all despawned and I could sleep through the rest of the night I got the veggies planted and built a large gantry over the farm area using metal girders with lanterns every few blocks to keep it nice and light. Then it was time to build the contraption. I decided to go for another gantry style contraption similar to my kelp farm. Placed as much gantry shaft as I had and built up the contraption around it using chassis, harvesters and mechanical saws. But I needed more parts and I was totally out of andesite. I was also totally out of diorite so I couldn't craft any more either which meant I needed to grab my vein mining pickaxe and head back down the mines. I grabbed a a few stacks, headed back to the farm, crafted up the remaining items required and completed the contraption before getting a little lost with the redstone. This needed to work similarly to the kelp farm, but instead of using long lines of redstone dust, I wanted to use redstone links, which would send signals back to the gear shift attached to the redstone contacts at each end of the farm. With the redstone in place and the machine working, I added in a water wheel for power, fenced around the area to keep it tidy and planted as much sugarcane as I could, which I'd been slowly gathering during the build process. And after three hours of hard work, I finished it off with the temporary external storage system using portable storage interfaces that transfer the items from the contraction into the double chest buried in the hill behind. That's enough of that. Anyway, after a little bit of AFK, I now have a whole chest worth of stuff as well as a whole bunch of sugar cane, which is absolutely fantastic. And I imagine that I was AFK so long that my wood farm is totally filled with wood. I have two double chests of the stuff. This is wonderful. But it does pose a bit of a problem because clearly my storage is in here, but all of the items I'm getting are out here and over there and in there. And I, oh geez, there we go. Oh no. It looks like we're about to be getting ourselves a new pet. There we go. Right, let's take out the chaps on top without hurting the horses, ideally. Oh, jeez, stop. Oh, no, I'm just, no, I'm just hurting the horses. No, I don't want to hurt the horses. I just like one of these horses, please, ideally. Oh, there we go. Got one. Right, run away, horse. Just a couple of chaps left to get. Don't go with me cabbages. Why? Oh, you can't ride them on Java without a saddle, can you? Oh, jeez. Okay. Here, new horsey, horsey, horsey. I have you a saddle, bud. There you go. Lovely. Right. And now all i got to do is add him to the co oh, collection of horses that we've got that all need names, by the way. Comments, please, with names for horses. We've got three of them. Anyway, though, as I was saying, it shouldn't be too difficult to get this farm directly inputted into here because, well, all of the stuff would just need to go underground and just feed into this. But I don't know if I can actually just feed items into that. I assume I can. If I throw some spuds on the floor down there, yes, they go straight in when it ended up in there. Fantastic. So with a bit of conveyor there and then a bit of conveyor there, a little bit more shaft over here. Now I'm hoping if I put this brass full on here facing into there, it's going to suck the items up and they should all hopefully go inside the machine. It looks like they are doing this is good. Oh, but we do have a clog. Something stopped. Why are we not going in? Is it because that's not there? Did they have to, like, pop off the end to go in? Oh, oh, geez. Oh, no, no. I'm pouring it all on the floor. Ah, I see. Yeah, they had to sort of pop off, hit that block, and then they would get sucked up. That seems a little bit dodgy. 
but it is working. Right, undo. Having a funnel going upwards should throw a whole stack of items upwards. And there it goes. And that one then sucks them back out of there. So that's fantastic. That works. We've got a little bit of jiggery pokery going on in the corner here to make all of that work. And then that's just coming back down from there as it was before. And watching the items go. Oh, look at that. They fall off there. Come along the conveyor, down to this little chute, and up they go into the storage system. Fantastic. And that sorted that little area out, which means this farm's going to never have a problem with its items because they'll all just get stored automatically. And now we need to do it for that over there and the wood farm over there. Basically anything that we want to put into our storage system. So I guess that means I need to dig a tunnel from here to over there and then more tunnels and more things. This is going to be interesting. And what I don't want to do is accidentally dig outside, so I'm going to have to go underground a bit. Oh, and of course, now I'm in one of my tunnels. Well, I suppose that's good, because that gives us good access to this. Not really what I wanted, though. And here we are, I am underneath the building. The back of it is where all of the connections and the wiring and all that sort of stuff is. But I think what might be cool is to have some sort of chute dropping down from the side of this building here and maybe going down to this point underground and then linking that up with the tunnel that we've just made. So that means somehow finding a way to get all of the items out of all of these things and then spit them out out of this wall somewhere without it all being in the way. One eternity later. Jeez, this stuff takes a long time. Okay, I I have moved this room around significantly. The blower is now blowing in the opposite direction into this barrel here, which will have a funnel on it going onto this conveyor, but not yet. The grindstone has switched place with the XP storage tank, and now that's all going into this barrel here, which will have a funnel coming onto this conveyor belt as well, but not yet. And then running underneath all of this is another conveyor belt that goes all the way to the back over here and into this room. Now, instead of the compost going into the compost bin, it's going to get hoppered straight onto this conveyor here and the kelp the dry kelp is going to have a funnel coming out the side of that onto this conveyor here but not yet and the reason not yet is that although i have put a couple of bits of shoot in place it's not actually connected to anything at all yet so that's basically going to come down into here and now i just need to link this up with our other tunnel so back at the depositing end we're going to need some belts Ooh. That was close. Jeez, I nearly fell down there. So belts. I'm going to have a belt that goes from the bottom of these stairs to the top of these stairs. Just like that. Don't ignore that. That's just a bit glitched. If I log out and log in again, it's fine. And that's going to transfer everything that comes from there into this barrel here using that. And then that's going to tra transfer everything from that onto that conveyor like that. Now, this conveyor has got to run a long way in this direction. And I don't know if belts will stretch that far, but I'm going to find out. So how far can this go? Where did the particles stop? Round about here. Okay, we'll have to have multiple belts then. There we go, one there. All right, link the easy bits with chain drive, and that will make sure everything's going in the right direction. Now, I might be able to get away with doing it like that, but I don't think so. Normally, it ends up going... Oh, jeez. The wrong way around when you do that. Just stick that back on there. So what you normally end up having to do is extend your belt back a little bit and stick it on that side instead. So hopefully that'll work, but we'll find out in a minute. And then all we need to do is give it some power. How hard could it be? Where am I going to get power from? That big old water wheel under there, but that's already pretty stressed out. So we'll pinch a little bit of water. So water wheel there, and then we just need to speed this up. So we'll go big wheel, little wheel, big wheel, little wheel, and then that should just line up to there. That should get that going. And there we go. Now that's going the right way. That one's going the right way. They're all moving along. It's even going going all the way up to here and then items should if i chuck a couple on there just to test this there you go go on the belt mate they should just pop into here and look they're going straight through this barrel out the other side and onto there wonderful now all i've got to do is stick on one of those on there and they should start going out into that funnel it looks like they are now attach that one on there put one of those on there and send all of the kelp that way as well everything is scooted across underneath the floor but where's it going it's coming down it's going along the conveyors and here it comes the bone meal is coming in where's it going going into there how's the food situation going on wow two thousand carrots a thousand wheat two and a half thousand potatoes two thousand sugarcane and the only thing left to connect to the storage system now is our wood machine how hard could that be we now have a chute system that's going to go through the wall and short depositing items onto the conveyor it is oh this is fantastic and it's nearly nearly empty oh what a what a farm <laughs> What a bunch of farms. In fact, what a video. We've done so much. I bet you can't wait for the next one.